Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Happy Wednesday. I'd like to share this message with you today because the Lord literally rebuked me this morning. And part of me making these videos isn't just to teach or to give testimonies regarding you know, things that the Lord has done for me. I also want to share my journey with you because sometimes I fail, sometimes I fall, and I think that it's important as believers to be able to encourage one another, even with sharing stories that may not necessarily be perfect because there's nothing that's really perfect. And um, it's vitally important for me to be real with you guys because I know that just like any one of you, I think you, we all go through the same thing in life. We're not always perfect, even though we try and our hearts are in the right place. Now, for a few days, I've been having this mountain that I've, you know, decided to have faith that God would move that mountain for me. And yesterday, I got into a situation tangentially related to this specific mountain. And this situation involved a couple of people, but I'm not going to get into the specifics because I don't love naming and shaming. But basically, that situation left me feeling angry. And uh, the angrier I got, the more thoughts I thought that made me even more angry. And so when I came home, you know, last evening, I just said, you know, Lord, just I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to continue to feel angry because the more I do, then, you know, I'll feel the resentment creeping up and I don't want to feel resentment towards anybody uh, because that leads to bitterness and unforgiveness and all of that stuff. Then I went right before bed, read my Bible as I always do. And I was reading from Fast Kings, which is where I am right now in my Bible study. And I read the story of Elijah, Prophet Elijah, when he challenged the prophets of Baal to have their gods consume the animal sacrifice on the altar. And these prophets prayed to Baal for hours. They cut themselves until they were bleeding, praying to God, to their God, Baal, and Baal didn't answer their prayers. And then Elijah, you know, killed some animals, put them on the altar, and then he put them upon 12 stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. And beneath that, he poured water three times so that the whole place was wet. And then he just said one prayer and asked the Lord God of Israel to consume this sacrifice so that the Israelites would know that he was Lord. And just like that, the fire came from heaven and consumed the entire uh, sacrifice. And not only that, it dried up all of the water that was around it. And it was just a marvelous situation. So as I was reading that, a voice said to me, when it's impossible, when it seems impossible, I'm possible. I am the God of impossibility. And I said, praise God, Lord, I accept your word. I take your word, I believe you, and I know you're going to move the mountain. And I thank you so much because actually when I got back that evening, the mountain had already begun to move. Like I was already seeing a shift in terms of, of what needed to happen for, for this mountain to be completely moved from my life. And so I thanked him for that and I went to bed. But when I woke up in the morning at 5.30 a.m. today, those crazy thoughts came right back in my mind. And I'm thinking, God, I don't really want to think these thoughts anymore. I don't want to think about these people, you know, that had made me angry the day before for whatever reason. I just said, you know, I, I don't want to think about them anymore. Why am I even still thinking about them? And so then I got up opened my Bible to read my Bible. And this time I didn't really have a method. I pretty much just opened up the Bible and it fell upon Psalms 127. And when I read the first two verses, I just was like, OMG, literally. I felt like God was rebuking me because Psalms 127, one, verse one says, unless the Lord builds a house, 
the laborers shall labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman will watch in vain. And then in verse 2, it says, and I have my Bible here, it says, It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. It's vain. Why? Why are you hustling, like waking up in the morning, sitting up late at night and eating from the bread of sorrow, basically? Why are you ruminating? On these problems it's vain of you to do that and the reason it's vain for you to do that is because when you it's actually pretty much almost a form of unbelief because you're saying you know you're worrying about this problem you haven't given it to god if you truly believe that god can move mountains for you i mean the night before i was like god thank you you're moving things i i believe you if i really believed in him then why am i still worrying about the situation why am I still angry with those people for whatever the reason was? See? So the Holy Spirit exposed this in me. And I realized, oh gosh, I immediately repented and said, Lord, I am sorry. I am so sorry. I repent. I didn't even realize that I had a little bit of doubt and unbelief beginning to creep up in my heart. And I said, Lord, I repent for my unbelief. Holy Spirit, cast away my unbelief. I am truly sorry. Please do not turn your face away from me. However, I feel how I feel. I'm just being real with you, Lord. I'm still feeling resentment, but I don't want to feel this way. So Holy Spirit, please cleanse me and just with the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ, please just wash away all of this anger so that it's just completely gone from me. And I am sorry for doubting you. I thank you for showing me that unbelief was beginning to creep up in my heart. And I thank you for rebuking me because only a loving father will rebuke his child. And it's interesting because the night before it was all nice and calm. It was all, when it's impossible, I'm possible. I'm the God of, impos of the impossible. This morning, God was telling me, listen, Unless I do something, you will be doing whatever you try to do in vain. And I thank God for showing this to me and for rebuking me this way because this morning when I woke up, I was actually thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to prove those guys wrong and all of this other stuff. And so this was really the message. When the ego, because I feel like my ego was, you know, getting into the whole mix. I was, you know, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to show them, you know. But God is telling me, I'm not going to subscribe to that. If you, this, if you do that, you're doing that on your own accord. But unless I do something, unless I build a house, you'll build in vain. So whatever efforts that I was going to try to exert to alleviate the situation or to try to prove myself wrong or to try to prove that they were wrong about me, all of those efforts would be in vain unless God was in the middle of it. And God doesn't operate at that level of trying to, you know, have the ego be in control. That's just not how God operates. So I stepped back and I realized, you know, and actually, uh, you know, the Spirit started speaking to me and saying to me, have I not begun to move things in your life? When you got, you know, when you were home last evening, did you not already see my hand moving the mountain? And I said, yeah, I did. And, and he was like, well, why are you then focusing on those people? Why are you choosing to focus on man and what they did and what they didn't do instead of focusing on me? Why are you looking to man for not approval per se, but why are you looking to man to be your source of the things that you're asking me to do for me? Why, when you've already asked me to take care of the situation, I have said I am going to do the impossible and I am going to move this mountain for you. And I showed you yesterday what I could do and that I am going to take care of the situation. And yet here you are still obsessing about man. And what they have failed to do or what they have done as opposed to focusing on me. 
it was a very humbling experience. I just, I said, I am sorry, Lord. I'm done. I don't want to think about those people. I don't want to think about that situation. Yes, I feel like how I feel, Lord. And I could sit here and pretend that that's not how I'm feeling. But you cannot be mocked. You know my heart even before I pray. So you know what's in there. And I'm just asking you to cleanse me of all of this. And just, Holy Spirit, take this away from me. This feeling of anger and you know, budding resentment, I need you to take it away from me because I don't want it, but I can't do it. So I'm asking you to cast away my unbelief, cast away these negative feelings that I'm having. But I know that I can control not thinking about these people anymore and I'm not going to think about them. I'm going to focus on your goodness. I'm going to focus on the things that you've already done to move the mountain and I am going to trust you 100%. And so as I prayed that prayer, then I was directed to read Psalms 125, which is literally in my Bible anyway, which is the King James Version. It's literally opposite 127. And the first verse says, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Praise the Lord! And then verse 3 says, For the rod of the wicked shall not rest, upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. And so I just said, you know, Lord, I thank you for your messages today. I thank you for rebuking me. I needed the slap on my head just for today. And, you know, last night you spoke to me softly. This morning you were a little bit more stern with me, you know. But you only need to tell me this one time because I am not going to wait for the next time that you have to tell me something because your voice will get louder, you know, and I don't want to know how you're going to communicate to me that I should completely step out of the situation and let you move. So I just wanted to share that with you and, uh, you know, I'm grateful to God actually for this experience because like I said before, you know, a loving father will rebuke his child when his child is getting off the path. If God stops rebuking you, then you should be worried, you know, but if when you do something or you're on the verge of, of diverging and he brings you right back in and rebukes you with the word of the Lord or through a brother or a sister, then you should thank God. You should praise the Lord because it means that he cares enough about you to want to steer you right on the right path. And so I just wanted to share that testimony with you and I hope that you'll be encouraged that when you decide that you want God to take care of a situation, you need to stop trying to be involved. When the Lord tells you he's going to do something, then don't try to help him accomplish what he said he's going to do because you know he's not going to walk in that and your efforts are going to be futile because unless he builds the house unless his hand is upon that same situation all of your efforts are going to be in vain unless he decides to watch over the city they that watch shall forever be watching with no fruit yielding whatsoever. So stay st stay steadfast in the Lord and listen to his voice when he rebukes you. And just, you know, for me, I basically repented on the spot. I said, I'm sorry. You know, and it's interesting. It's now a couple of hours. I don't know. It's like four o'clock right now, right? That was about seven in the morning. And I haven't even given these guys one thought after that. I haven't thought about the situation, I haven't, and my anger and my resentment is gone. And I praise the Lord so much for that. So stay blessed and um, I'll talk to you another time. Take care. Bye.